So we what we're we're here this evening. We got the uh, the library board of trustees and the and the Sunland Select Board together. We're going to have a joint meeting. We had received a letter of resignation uh, from the library trustees that needed to be replaced. Um, they didn't. They didn't. They, they didn't like my dancing, so. <laughs> I was going to start singing and they all. Oh, protest. there you go. All right, so 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 basically, uh, to by our by the bylaws, we had to have a joint meeting. The board, the chair of the board, um, is appointed the chair of this overall group, um, and. If we have more than one nomination for the position, then what happens is that the we do go through a roll call vote, uh, and the chair of the group group gets to vote last. So that's that's the one good thing about being the chair in this. All right. So that being said, um, is there a nomination from the floor for? The fulfillment of the unexpired term. Do I hear a second? second? We have a motion made and seconded. Is there a second nomination? Hearing none. Two calls. Hearing none. I'd like to. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to. Uh, Close the nominations. Motion to close nomination. I have a motion made and seconded. I second it. To close the nominations. So nominations are closed. Would uh, nominated like to say something? Sure. Shoot. Um, Introduce name, yourself. My name is Heidi Warrenclap. I live with my husband and my son in Sunderland. We've been here since 2017. I am a lifelong reader and lover of libraries. We have a little free library in front of our house. I love to see people out there taking the books. And prior to moving to Sunderland, we lived in South Deerfield, and I've been a member of the Tilton Friends since 2016. I've served as the vice president and the president of that organization, and I'm really excited to just get more involved in the library here in my community. I think they're an amazing community resource that is equally accessible to all, and they deserve our support. Heidi, thank you for uh, offering, offering to serve. I, I, I think most people that join the library trustees find it to be a very um, rewarding experience um, and they 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 have a critical mission in our town and and it's in unfortunately you're just in the budget time so budget time a little people get a little cranky but besides that uh, it's usually a great opportunity to serve so thank you for stepping forward all right so we have a motion made and seconded for Heidi Bar Clap as a library trustees at this time. Uh, we should have a vote. I will do a voice vote at this time. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare it unanimous. Do we need to do it now? That's it? Good. No. Aye. Congratulations, Heidi. Thank you. Welcome. Library trustees, you got anything else to say? No. We might have to shut down our free library because it's uh, <laughs> uh, a little competition. Conflict <laughs> of uh, interest there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know I shouldn't have asked. Thank you, Hollis. Yep. <laughs> so, June 17th, the concerts are coming back. So, we're oh, having nice. our first outdoor concert since two years, three years hiatus. Yeah. Um, Wildcat and Rohalloran of Sunderland, he's who started at our concert series, the one we started them out years ago, is playing on Friday, um, June 17th. So hopefully we'll all be there to hear some outdoor music at the library without any rain. We would have any more Red Sox Yankee games. I love when the Red Sox beat the Yankees right out here on the lawn on the summer <laughs> evening. It's a good reminder, yes. Yeah, with the big screen. Good reminder. Right, Hollis? We have baseball. Could you talk, could you fix that? <laughs> yeah. I can't go home and watch a Bruins game. Mm -hmm. what I gotta do. There you go. You're playing very well, aren't they? Yeah. Five zero and one in the last I'm six games, trip. something yep. like that. Yeah. It's been a good one. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Our meeting is adjourned. The
You can adjourn. Yep. Yep. Trustees meeting is adjourned. It's seven. So you got your minutes and everything, right? Thirteen. You know what? Yes, I did yep. take minutes, but did somebody take minutes? Yeah, we got it. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. Secretary Thanks, Thanks, guys. Have well, a good night. Brady. All right. Next up, <clears throat> flip that one off the, the list of things to do. Thanks, Emily. Bye. Thank you, Emily. Wait, public waves. Huh? All right. So earlier this evening, we had a, uh, a rousing caucus. I believe all elected positions that were open have someone in the. Uh, those positions. So, thank you all for showing up. Um, and uh, it was actually very nice to see everybody once again. It's been a while. I know since we had and, a room like and, that. And it was kind. It was kind. It was not kind of. It was very nice to to hear to hear the voices and and of people that we have not seen in a long time. So, yep. it looks like to offer my congratulations to everyone. That is seeking <clears throat> election, and also I'd like to um, express my sincere gratitude to everyone that has chosen not to run but had had served out David and uh, Caitlin and the other members of our staff that were no longer able to continue. It's not hard. It's not easy, especially in this time of COVID. So. Uh, um, but your service is greatly appreciated. Next up, we have appointment of Delta Sand and Gravel Public Wayers. Jeffrey, what do we got on that one? Yes, we have uh, four Delta employees um, to be appointed as public wayers. TJ Conroy Jr., Melinda Gibbons, Jane Kusensky, and Jessica Perone. Okay, that's it? That's it. That's, that's it. Okay, so I'll take a uh, motion and a second on those, please. Motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to appoint public wares at Delta Sand and Gravel that have been read up by Jeff. Any further discussion? Without hearing any fur further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Next up is, you want to save the uh, budget review to a little bit later, Jeff? To, sure. All right, let's go to old business, annual town meeting calendar. How's that? I think we got it this time. Um, last time, I think there was uh, one of the dates was uh, a Monday when there was a holiday scheduled um, and it, I, I believe it was Monday April 18th which is Patriots Day um, so we've just clarified that technically any time before uh, the warrant is posted the select board and finance committee can vote on the warrant mm -hmm. article so um, an updated memorandum with the dates so 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 everybody knows that the town meeting um, isn't is the the select board it it is actually the moderators meeting um, and there's two people that have to be at the town meeting one is the moderator the other is the town clerk the uh, select board, for all intents and purposes, if you read town meeting time, are just window dressing. We're, we're guests. We're, 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 yeah, I knew I had a purpose in life. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you did, didn't you? So, you so, 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 so basically, um, but the one thing that the, that the select board does control is the warrant. So approximately... 20 years ago, we, the, the, the board at that time, put together a bylaw that basically codified our warrant process. Um, because there was a thought, there was 
in the community that select board could put whatever they, and it's actually kind of true, could put on the warrant whatever they want, whenever they wanted. And, and it could. So, but now, what through our bylaws, what we tried to do was codify, proceduralize how the town meeting is done. So it's more, it was more open. And, and that's why you get a card in the mail uh, so that you, that most people throw it away, we understand, but it does get, does give you the opportunity that you have been notified that there is a meeting. And, and that, and again, that's, we, the, we believe, have long, long believed that town meeting um, is an important part of our process. Um, so when you see, that's why it, talking about the dates, they're basically, they're statute by mass general law, and there's also bylaws that we have in our town that make these dates important. So, I think we're all set now. Yes. All right. So if you can put, just post this on the on our web page. Our biggest date that's coming up is Friday, March eighteenth, and that's when articles are due. Correct. So if you have articles, we need to get them in. You need to get them in shortly. And so are you working with Casey and Brian about the senior center one? Yes. Good. Thank you. All right, are we all set with that? Yep. Next up is the um, ARPA, ARPA fund discussion. What you got, Jeff? So I have an updated uh, information um, and sort of the next potential uh, projects that I think we started to discuss last week, um, which were the glycol sprinkler replacement for some of the loops at the elementary school, the phone system upgrade, uh, gable vent and soffit repairs. This is all at the elementary school, actually. And then in other town capital projects, uh, replacing seal tiles and insulation at the um, highway garage. Uh, I misspoke. I think I said that there was some infiltration. There's actually a, the hot water heater is in the ceiling and that was leaking and it has been repaired. So that was the issue. Uh, that, that's why they think that there might have been some, some water up there that may have caused mold. Um, the carpet replacement in the library, um, repairs to Riverside Park restrooms, uh, the town office building front step replacement, we got an estimate for that, and then we also got an estimate for refinishing the wood floors mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this building. Um, and I'm getting a little bit more information on exactly what is involved, but that one, just so you know, was about $50,000. Um, and I've asked them to do, break it down a little bit by area. Yeah, I, I mean, you see. can generally assume that it would be that it's the first and second main floor and the second floor. Um, but like. The common area in the main floor is carpeted and the second floor is not and right yep. in the select board office and the main floor is carpeted and this room is so it's not exactly split 50 50 but um if you wanted to do one floor you can approximate you know mm -hmm. 20 to thirty thousand, um and that would be to sand the floors and do a water-based um polyurethane probably uh, not polyurethane, what stain, right? A water based stain. No. Uh, well, I would imagine it'd be a polyurethane because the stain wouldn't, that's just a colorant, so it'd just be a polyurethane, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah polyurethane because it won't, yeah, it won't have us, it won't have the so, yeah. Stain. We want to know how many coats are going to be, are, are they putting on four two coats. coats, three coats, five coats, just four, four coats. coats. four coats, be for four coats, and so. hardener. And I would guess if it's a water base, too, so yeah. 
Okay. So um, I'm just confirming that that and you're going to anticipates prevailing wage and yep. all that stuff. Because that if it doesn't, then it'll be yeah, seventy five thousand or yes. so to do the building. Yes. And then there's a list of uh, suggestions from the, the public and other departments. Did they so just so check are, you, are you looking for any expenditures now, right, today? Um, at this time, I don't think that there is a dire need to do anything. There's no, you know, the public health or safety issues maybe with the insulation in the the garage that would probably be the the closest or the glycol sprinkler replacement so so what, what's this about the uh, bridge academy for the four officers those are for the four part-timers right i thought yes. this i thought the state was reimbursing that so the state is reimbursing a certain amount um and i can go back and show the breakdown but it, there's can you just get the breakdown for that please yeah but that that was already I, I i personally don't think the town should have to spend anything on it so i i mean and again there's a law in the state of massachusetts that says that we're not supposed to you're not supposed to uh when they pass a law they're not supposed to be passing on unfunded mandates right so I was just wondering why, 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 why? Well, isn't that kind of an unfunded mandate? Yeah, it is. And we're spending money mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, but you need to fulfill. Does this. that make sense? Yeah, and I just want to confirm that you did already vote to use ARPA funds for that, yeah. right? Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah I can get but you I, the breakdown. I just, I just want to know state. why. And, and and again, I'm just I'm just saying, you know. And, and when I, I, I read things about the state giving money, why, and, and I'm, I yep. just. Absolutely. Because ARPA aside, it's an ongoing cost, you know, that not, you have to incur now. And, so, I, and, and again, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not arguing why something was voted. I'm not saying that they were right, they're wrong. I have my opinion and, and I think what they're trying to do is correct but at the same time putting an unfunded mandate on a town is difficult because once once our part-time officers become full-time trained they are going to have a tremendous value right they're not going to stay part and, and they're not offering they're not offering part-time academies that that often any longer either Right. So, so that means we're not, and that's why we have to. I think this board really has to seriously consider the chief's um, additional funding for for a full time position, Be, because long term, long term. I mean, how are you going to be able to attract part time if they're not running? Well, it's the same, it kind of like the same similar issue that we had with, you know, ambulance folks and stuff, trying to get part-time people much harder than it used to be. Absolutely. I, I agree. Uh, and, and, and again, for a now, lot of reasons. now yeah. and, and maybe this is a, this is a great, you know, a, a, a great thing that you're, you know, I think personally, I think we, we in Sunderland have been very, very, very fortunate to, to have in the past some outstanding and presently outstanding part-time officers mm -hmm. and many of them have gone on to become um, full-time right other community sworn officers of the law I so I think that's a wonderful thing I, I it, it's 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 now are it making everybody full-time the best way to to run a police department in small communities I probably would have an opinion on that. I, I think there's something to be said also for part-time people in small communities, but that's a whole different. Anyway, so yeah, it'd be. Yep. So so it's now is so. Do you want? Is there anything? So there's nothing that you're looking for 
for a vote on then this evening? Um, not this evening, but I think that the other um, main point of discussion that I at least want to raise is uh, premium using ARPA funds for premium pay. And so, so ARPA fund premium pay, that's restricted on who can get that money, correct? So you couldn't pay custodial people. Um, you can pay. You could pay custodial people. Yes, you could. You could pay restaurant workers and grocery workers um, if they are working. If they were working and they couldn't have worked remotely. And can you pay our our school employees if they? I I, I and I how so how how do how do we. How, can can you pay town hall staff? Uh, I, I believe that you can argue either way on either of them, <laughs> but I think that um, that there are certain categories of employees that could not have worked remotely, and I think that uh, I, I I and, and I, I and again I don't know how how you guys feel, but I feel if you're gonna if if anybody is gonna be Anybody's going to be these premium pay, you'd have to do everybody and not just a. We can't select it. Yeah. Okay. In my opinion, and 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 maybe Jeff, if if we, when when our final budget numbers revenue side, maybe maybe there's money that we could augment. I don't I don't know that answer yet. So I'm I'm I want to I I personally won't. But I, I would think if we're gonna if we're gonna think and how and how many towns did how many towns have actually done something like that? Didn't look like there was a ton, did it, from the list? Yeah. The, so based on a, a self-reported survey of uh, Massachusetts municipalities, there were only three that definitively did it. There were another handful, maybe a dozen, that were considering it but had made a decision when they responded. Um, so I, I haven't been able to peg an exact number that have done it. That's fine. Yep. But it and does not. So you're not saying 50% of the towns or 75% of the no. towns? No. Two I'm, of them were out east. I got the list here. Yeah. You're looking at Arlington and Danvers. So I do have a question about that. Were there any people that were required to come in that were a salaried employee that had increased hours that they weren't compensated for? Good question. Versus an hourly wage employee? Because I think those people need to be a higher consideration. Right. A salaried employee who exceeded his hours or her hours of a normal, you know, salary to address a COVID situation. Yeah, because if you're hourly, you're going to get paid. For you're getting paid right for all your yeah. hours. And I'm yeah. not saying that they're not entitled to something at yeah. some point, but... It's just a mechanical question. Yeah, I think we need to take care of a salaried employee first that... Or they need to be considered. That's a good question, Chris. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't believe so. Yeah. But I will double check that. Yeah. And, and I, I, I know a lot of a lot of our our town employees, you know, the highway the highway department never stopped the uh, basically if you if you were a teacher you didn't I mean you taught differently, but you still and and in then when they came back to work, when they came back to work in what? We started what? September, April, when they first came back? Teachers? Yeah. 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 I mean, they didn't know what was gonna happen. So how, how do you not how do you not look at every Well even in I mean there's a lot. I mean you got think about inspectors that were going into people's homes. Uh, I mean it, it's I, it's right, endless almost. Right. And I, I I, I just I, I would just hate to you know they're, they're, you can you can treat people equally you can treat people fairly I'm I'm a fair I'm a, I'd rather treat people fairly versus versus equally 
and 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 for anybody treating somebody equally and fairly are two different things. I, I so that's true. I, I and and I, I think you know and and I just there 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 are a lot of people that made a lot of sacrifices during during the COVID time, mm -hmm. and a lot and. So I, I, I would think we'd have to start from right if if then the other option is the other thing is that everybody that came in got paid too except for your what you're saying some of your salaried workers but they they made so all right so we can well if we can answer Chris Crystal's questions and and if we can please understand exactly who who's eligible for and not for okay. And, and let us know what your uh, next uh, recommendation is for uh, expenditures. Okay. All right? Yep. All righty. Uh, all right, let's do FY23 budget review. All right. So do you want to start with... Um, that's not the Zoom. Um, revenue picture. Do sure, I'll talk revenue if you got it? All right, um, we're getting close. <laughs> we have initial estimates that I haven't been able to put into the spreadsheet oh. yet. Um, yeah. We don't have free cash totally wrapped up, but we have a, a rough figure that we think it's going to be about, and it's. Uh, we think it's going to be coming just under five hundred thousand. I was going to say five. Um, good. So we DOR had some questions. They wanted to talk to their superiors, who was out on vacation last week. So he's back this week. So our hope is to get that. I was hoping today, but not yet. Um, totally wrapped up and certified. Okay. Um, so that that's something on the revenue picture. Uh, estimated local receipts, um, we think is going to be a couple thousand dollars. We're estimating it's a couple thousand dollars higher than last year. And I'm just um, I spoke with the accountant today, and she just had some questions about uh, variations in different local receipts um, throughout the last five years, and wanted as a new accountant yeah. to just become familiar. So you're still looking right around six. Six sixty five, six six hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, I think we're I think we're thinking it's probably gonna be closer to six seventy. Um, okay. and then I think new growth is gonna be about forty three thousand. Um, and again we have a new assessor's admin assistant and he said, Well the last couple of years it's been in the hundred I said, Well yeah, we've had some pretty big developments and new growth related to that, but you know 43 is similar to mm -hmm. fiscal years 18 and 19 right. and 20, typical. so um, that, that didn't seem an unreasonable estimate. So I think hopefully by next week we will have a much clearer revenue picture. Yeah, because it's, it's, hard, it's, hard to start, it's hard to start looking at what we have to start rec making recommendations on the budget until we know what we have for revenue. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Need all those inputs. Right. Right. Okay. And uh, there was a, a legislative, the MMA legislative update meeting on Friday, and cherry sheets and state aid was brought up, and the MMA is advocating um, unrestricted general government aid increased so to about 2.7 percent, and that was in the governor's budget and that was 757,858. Um, the MMA is gonna be advocating to increase that, I think to six or seven percent, a six or seven percent increase. Hmm. So that, that would be helpful there. So why do you got a minus 325 on the uh, state assessment? Um, that, that is based on the assessments from the cherry sheet that yeah. Um, just like we pulled the general government and yeah. education from the cherry sheets. So it's a hundred thousand dollars more than than last year. Yes. Huh. 
Yep, and I can get you a breakdown of yeah, that'd be good. What that can, yeah, where that's that a big jump. Yep. And why? And the eight forty nine was short. You say we're short eight hundred forty nine thousand dollars because what you haven't plugged in some right. numbers, right? Right. So, um, I would say about seven hundred thousand. 710 in between new growth and uh, local receipts. Um, and then yeah. we can so use up to you're, 30%. You're looking at local receipts about 670, new growth of 100,000 or 40. 40. So that's 710. So that, and that's not even the, not using the uh, free cash or anything to offset right. it. Right. So right. A lot closer than. Yeah. So I think, right. Thank you for pointing that Temporary out. Temporary numbers. <laughs> Not scary. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's a work in progress. Hmm. Now, when does in the schools coming next week to talk about their budget? The school scheduled to come next week, and then the senior center the following week. Okay. Um, Does that wrap up our budget presentations? I think right. That would wrap up center, our budget right? presentations. Yes. Yep. So, so do you want to look at the budget detail now? Sure. Was there anything that you're really standing out on? Um, let me see if I, can. I think I think we should make a motion to uh, reduce the moderator salary. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought they have to pay a fee, don't they, to actually be the yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they need to pay us a fee to be the moderator. That's right, for the pleasure of it. I love that. Yep. You know, I think we're we're still working on on some of the um, the personnel committee's recommendations, and I should have those in the budget uh, for next week. So, so you don't you don't have the re you don't have you just level funded all the salaries right now. Not necessarily. Okay, um, all right. That, 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 you don't, don't, don't go any further. Okay. No. That's so fine. We, will, we will definitely have a, a much clearer picture. Um, you know, I think that one of, there, there were a couple lines. The building inspector talked about his book purchase, and so you'll see oh, right. a pretty big uh, increase in their expenses. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, how, I, I, so I got a question. How, how, how should we... How should we handle that? Should could could we just look at when when we look at the, the select board I mean, do we take it out of professional development? I I mean how 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 would because that's and that's the same thing I was talking about the other day in the senior center budget. It's a one time fee. So why should it go against the budget? Yeah, it, that's it's it's a one time recur it's it's periodic. Right. It's yeah. not an annual fee. What's that? It's not an annual fee, it's not an annual but it's fee. a regular. Well, right. that that book may go 6 years without being up or or longer without being updated. I know. But you know, I think that You know what I mean, might, right, Davey? Exactly. It's it's regular in that it comes out periodically, but you never know when. So you can't say, "Oh, it, it happens every year or every other year." So maybe professional development is a good. Well, know, I, I don't know. I mean, do we, do we have do or or do we create do we create a line for that? Like, what do you what do you buy the uh, the log book the when the law the law books for the selectman's office? Uh, I haven't yet, so I don't know. You mean how frequently? Yeah, I, I would imagine they're fairly old at this point. Well, but we've been updating those. Have we? Yeah, so we we've been getting you get the inserts, right? We we get what, what you, you know what they, you know what they call them. So we have down the down the Suckman's yep. office. We have all the law books. Yep. But every year we we get we get the updated volumes. Right. Um. I don't know where that comes out of. Can we carry if we create a line item? Can we? We can't carry that though year to year, right? No. So, but what I was thinking is. You know, the the building commissioner talked about structuring his wages based on the percentage of inspection fees, which is a revolving fund. You could take a percentage and funnel it towards 
right no towards it. so that's expense and and wages yep um and just itemize it right yep that's and then idea. out of the revolving fund it is a way we could do it and that way it's not um you know again it's generated by the so does that cover it though if we get back to the the years where there's just not the number of inspections there have been the past few well, you start, you don't have to spend the full amount of the revolving fund. Mm -hmm. um, we just put in a certain percentage each year, maybe. Right. We could estimate over the last, like, I'd say don't count the last couple of years. Yeah. Because and then pick the you know five years before that, and then <coughs> we could come up with a percentage. that. Because right. then, unlike a line item, we don't have to worry about rolling into free cash and having to deal with reset, you know. Redoing yeah. It. I mean, I'm just, I know that the... the Special revenue funds and revolving funds have to be authorized by statute. So yeah. if it were specific for, you know, code books or inspection um, expenses, I don't know if that would specifically be allowed. But mm. certainly, in, 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 can you just can you just think about it for and, and see and, and maybe, maybe I mean, I in in. Get a get a. Uh, I was just looking. I was trying to look up real quick. The um, I, I know of a company that runs the classes, but I couldn't find the uh, prices on the code books. But just just so I, I mean, find out what the price is so that we know. Get a quote and yep. and see see if there's a way that we can work it into the work it into the budget versus. I, I, and again, I I just hate. You know the town. We we every every year we talk about it at the town clerk. You know because because of the it, up, up one year then down the next because of the election. So right. I, I was just trying to see if there's an easier way to do that. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. As Scott used to say, take the noise out of it. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other. One that'll probably jump out at people is, and, and I would encourage folks to come on the 21st to talk hear about the senior center budget. But there, there's a an increase there, um, and, and it's explainable. Um, the senior center has been getting a, a grant every year that's become more competitive this year, or competitive this year. And so rather, th and they've been funding a position out of it. So, um, you know, I think that they wanna make sure that they budget suffi a sufficient amount. Um, and there's a new director and she has um, new programming that she wants to do. And, um, you know, there's also this, senior center there were issues with the building and they had to move locations and so there's rent associated with the new location now and so um explainable but i think that that's one of the things that's going to jump out at people um i think those were the main ones um that at least caught my eye but you know overall I think and and again we're going to be refining the expense side but I think it was about a 5% increase over last yeah about 5% over last overall. year um, so fairly reasonable and I think that's with the anticipated um, you know seven and a half percent increase from frontier and three and a half from uh the elementary school so yeah four percent from the <coughs> elementary school right yeah you know and again you know frontiers up seven point one percent offset this year by you know you're going down almost forty thousand out of Franklin Tech and that's because that's purely just number of students. Enrollment. Right. Right. Yep. right. And that goes up I mean that goes up, goes and, up down. and down. Yep. Yep. 
and and that that's that's the only that's the only problem I have is that it could just as easily go up forty thousand, which it did. It has. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. We've seen it go both ways over the years a lot. So. Unfor well, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. I, and again, I'm not saying it. You know, it's 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 the students that are being. But then, I, I would. And again, when you look at the cost for education, no one, no one likes. I mean, I have, a, I have a solution, but the state doesn't want to hear it. Nope. <laughs> I, I think it's simple. I, I, I think that, that uh, instead, of, and D David just concluded his negotiations on the on the elementary. Union Union thirty eight, yep. Union thirty eight budget. <clears throat> so we have Union thirty eight, we have Frontier, we have if you think across the street, how many unions and school, how many hours, how many lawyers, how how much time is spent negotiating contracts? Why do we do that? The state the state the state why should why should a teacher and some don't get paid less than a teacher in Arlington? They, I think they have this pretty much the same qualifications, right? Pretty much, yeah. They, they, so, so why wouldn't the state pay the cost of labor? Have one union. It's a fascinating they question. They negotiate. They negotiate on the on the big scale. Then, then, the local communities would be just, would be in charge of providing. A facility for them to right, be taught out. That that would that would be really saying that would really be putting that would the state that would be saying the states behind education. Because I don't think I don't think a student in Sunderland or Deerfield or Conway or Rowe or Shelburne or Charlemont is any less valuable than a, than a student in Arlington, Wayman or Wayland. Sure, Rockton. I don't think I, I don't think there's any less value to those students out here, is there? But if you look look at how much it costs, how look at how much each student costs for education in, in the Eastern Fire State versus out here, is that fair? Should should our should our kids be any should should our kids expect a, a different education than than the kids out in the, in the Boston area? I don't think so. I think it needs a radical rethinking. No, it's not radical. It's just common sense. No, I mean compared to the way we've been doing. Oh, you know, absolutely. I mean, from a procedural standpoint. Well, and I know, I know yep. we don't know anything. I know we don't know anything in West, you know, Western Mass. No. But, but then again, if you want, remember I said, if you want to be fair, you give, you give, give our students the same opportunities that other students have. Yep. I will get off my. I was. <laughs> There was one more thing that I wanted to mention, which is the uh, health you found, insurance. You found Fifty million dollars, right? Yeah. In Jeff? my pocket. Yeah. See, I knew, um, I knew we had a good choice. We had Jeff Kravitz. And here's my resignation. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. Why am I working? Um, why am I working for this when I had exactly. fifty million in my pocket? Um, what you got? Health insurance uh, rates are going up 6.2%. So one of the things that we're exploring is offering a alternative um, HMO plan, yeah. which would okay. basically be the- We don't the, offer an HMO now? We offer an HMO and a PPO. Yeah. Um, the HMO is a New England network. Yeah. There is a an HMO that is less expensive, um, but, has fewer hospitals. It's only Massachusetts. There are a couple of hospitals, um, Mass General in Boston and uh, Brigham and Women. That are together. the two big ones. That and and Tufts is not included either. Um, not included. In are not included. So this would you be just, you just be offering. You just be offering this plan. It would just. It would be in addition to the existing plans. It would be the same copays as our current health. Um, HMO plan, uh, just as a as for people who say oh, I'm healthy, I don't want to pay the high premiums. I'm okay with um, a s smaller service area. Um, so we're looking at 
adding that as an option um, Does as that well. mean Cooley Dickinson would not be included? Cooley is included in okay. Bay State. Because they're um, part of Mass General. That's why yeah, I was Bay asking. State, Franklin, and in Springfield are both included. Okay. Um, so, you know, the... <laughs> It's a double-edged sword, right? Because mm -hmm. you offer a different plan, you get a lot more subscribers, Our cost, the town cost might actually go up. So I think that we, I, I think that it, it's um, still worth offering. I'm trying to get more information from Maya, our insurance provider, about in the past when they've offered this plan, it's like, how, what's the growth look like in other communities just to get an idea? Um, and then the, that would also play into the discussion, you know, in future years of, of the employer share of the contribution. If the town is saving money and employees are saving money, does the town want to, um, increase it, its contribution from 60% to something else? So I did want to mention that cause that insurance number could, could, if, if we decide to offer the additional plan, we may want to bake in a little bit more um, in, in case we do get a lot of people that want to sign up for it. Yeah. And that's at a 13% savings of what their projection is for next year. Correct. So I, I think that I also wanted to mention it because ultimately I think the, the select board would make a decision of whether or not they wanted to add that as an option to the plan. So just to put it on your radar and I'll obviously have more information about exactly what the plan is and, and what the savings could potentially be and, and things like that so you can make an informed decision. But okay. um, we're hoping that that would help decrease the health insurance cost. Okay, and I, and I know some people ask about uh, looking at different providers, but it's it's just like you just can't willy nilly change. And we and remember when we first went from we went to Maya from there there yeah. there there it's it's not a one one for one savings. Yeah, and 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 when when there you get there's got so much money that has to be covered. You have to keep out there to pay that things may happen down, you know, two years, three years, four years, five years down the road. So it's usually not you don't save a dollar if you know. Well, I could get this thing for for six percent cheaper. Well, but you're not going to necessarily save that six percent. But you might save that six percent for two years, and then all of a sudden it jumps. Exactly. You're paying more. It, and Absolutely. you can't be changing health insurances every couple of years either, because it's that's just disruptive. Disruptive. Yep. It's like the stock market. You got to pick one and kind of ride it out, because you're going to have gonna good have years and bad years. Yep, exactly. And unfortunately, you have to have a longer term horizon for that. Stuff. Well. Sadly, that's kind of what the insurance is starting to seem like it is. But I do think, you know, I, I asked Maya to provide information about the benefits that we offer and the co-pays and how many other communities, you know, are we on the higher end? Are we on the lower end? And our plan is really, uh, as far as benefits are concerned, on the higher end, um, out-of-pocket expenses, co-pays, emergency room visits. Right, you you're also, you're paying a lot less when I say the higher. <laughs> it's good benefits. Right. Um, so we're paying a higher premium, but they're also getting more for their premium. They're right. very right. low co-payments, very low ER payments, very yeah. low, like, no hospitalization payments. And that, you know, depending on your situation in life, that can make a big difference. Oh, sure. You could, you know, some of them, I think we're looking at, some of them are up to $275 a day for in-hospital until you hit a cap. But, right. you know, that's a lot of money to come up with. Yeah, I agree. Okay, anything else on the budget you want to talk no. about? 
Nope. Crystal, is there anything to uh, tweak your interest on this budget? No, I mean, I've been looking through the numbers. Unfortunately, I wasn't really here last year for it, so this is all new for me. Uh, well, I can tell you that the greatest thing that's happened in budget since I've been on the board is now we got it on the computer. Because we used to go through a ream of paper with different numbers, and now Jeff just I changes the numbers. And yeah. <laughs> but we, we, we would have... It, which were kind of good in a way because it was it gave you a historical, uh, right, historical. You can, yes. Oh, yeah. you can do it on here, you know, at some point. Yeah, but um, but we used to have eleven by seventeen, and it, it, we had a lot of them. Yeah. But and magnifying glasses and reading glasses. I would say at least I can read it now. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, okay. Did you have anything else you looked at on the budget? No, I think it's all right. Uh, select board updates. Dave? Um, we had an announcement that there should be an official one coming up, but we did settle for Union 38, so that'll be that'll be good. Um, thanks to everybody who was involved in that. It was a good process. Um, and tomorrow night, capital planning. I might be a few minutes your... late to that, but I'll call in from the road or whatever. So okay. You're going to be able to uh, make your recommendations tomorrow night? I think we're getting pretty close. Okay, good. Crystal? We still have a few, I think, right? Yeah, I think it. it's hard because ARPA is also being used for capital, so. I know. It's like herding ARPA cats. <laughs> herding <laughs> ARPA cats. Yep. Um, personnel we met tonight, again, Jeff already brought up, you know, the, the potential recommendation coming down the road for a third healthcare option, kind of. I think we're getting close to coming up with a recommendation for colas and stuff like that. Excellent. Excellent. Anything else? Nope. Um, we had a we had a meeting up with the South County Senior Center Friday, um, where we finished up the the budget. Uh, it, the budget was presented to us. It's a it's a little different, and Jeff started talking about it. And we will continue the conversation with our new uh, senior center director. Uh, but Jeff Jeff was the the biggest thing is that they had, and this has always been a a big item with us. Um, we have a position of an outreach coordinator, um, and that out uh, we we've always felt that that outreach coordinator is, is an integral part of the South South County Senior Center, and to do outreach with members of our community that may not be as mobile, may not be able to get out as much. That uh, for you know, and, and there's a lot of reason why people don't, and we. The Board of Oversight has always um, thought this position, if anything, should be expanded um, and, and, and show during time of COVID the importance of that position about because people weren't coming into the senior center because we couldn't come into the senior center. Um, but that, that position is a critical position. So it, it the last four or five years that we've had the position, it's been, um, we re had received a grant for that. We want to commit to that program, to that position, and it's hard to actually go out and hire a position if you tell the, say that the position is funded by grants. Uh, a lot of quali qual quality people will not apply for a position that's, that's just funded by grants because you don't know from year to year. So what we decided to do is we, we put that line item into the budget. So there, there is an increase. Now, hopefully, it'll be offset by the grant. We'll, we'll get the grant, we'll offset it. Our discussions in this, the Board of Oversight is how that money come back to the towns if we get it. 
the grants. So we are talking about special revenue funds and all kinds of interesting things the other day that Jeff is researching because uh, we need to research it. So, so we'll, we'll have more information and by the 21st when, when we have the meeting. So it was a good, it was a good, it was actually a very good meeting. Um, the Jennifer M. Millard um, is very familiar with budgets um, and she took a very strong role in the creation of this budget and and some things have changed, um, but we got a good start. So we're, we're, we'll be addressing that. i also like to talk about the, uh, the caucus this evening. And it was a long time since we've had people in the room together. Um, and it was nice to see many of the faces that we really haven't seen in a long time because of COVID. Um, and I, and I did what I said earlier about members that chose not to seek reelection. Um, it's hard. It's hard to put your name on a ballot and it's even because once, once your name is on that ballot, the first time, right, Crystal? Um, that, that night before the election, you wonder if you're gonna get more than one vote. Your you mom. Because <laughs> your, your mom will vote for you, maybe. Um, but it, it's, it's, a, uh, um, it's a very um, interesting time, the first time you put, so I, I, I would just like to congratulate the people that stepped, stepped up to put their name on the ballot. Um, that's the hardest part, is to put that name on the ballot for the first time. And, and for the people that have chosen not to, to, to seek re-election in their, their current positions, I sincerely thank you for everything you did. David, uh, nine years, it's a, it's a hard job. Um, Caitlin Rock for um, the, Board the of Health. Board of Health, it's very, that, and again, I just can speak because I saw a lot of their meetings and it's, they're, they're not easy. They're not, and they were just bombarded with, bombarded with information. So I just, and everybody else that, that, that has run and has, has served their thing. Thank you and um, thank you for, for putting your name on the ballot. Thank you for putting yourself out there. Um, and I hope, I hope it was a rewardable experience for you all. Okay. Jeff, anything else for town administrator updates? Just a couple of things. Um, the town clerk asked if we could um, appoint Mr. Alan Richards as a registrar. Um, at this time, enter, I will take a nomination for Al Richards. As long as you don't ask him what my class grade score was when I was in ninth or tenth grade biology, I'm all set. I will nominate Mr. Richards. Uh -huh. Second. You nominate him? Sure. And David second. So we have a motion to appoint Al Richards as registrar. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Three zero. Thank you. Uh, two more quick things. One, last year we had a separate warrant article for the Mosquito Control District uh, fee. Um, is that something we want to continue doing as a warrant article? It is not currently in the operating budget. It is an annual cost for every year we choose to participate. So. I, I would like to do one. I, I would like to do one more year to see, yeah. and it, and then at that point we'll be able to have a better understanding if it's working for us. Yeah. Okay. Agree. Yeah, I excellent. think. Okay. Yep. So let, let's put a warrant article for that. Thank you. And then the last thing is, um, we've been contacted um, to ask about a Tritown Beach representative. And I, I'm trying to get more information on the Tritown Beach because I, I know the name means three towns and, uh, but I haven't been able to find any sort of agreement or, okay. So I'm-, I'm We just wouldn't be 
part of it, right? So we haven't been What's part that? of it. Because we wouldn't be part of the agreement, right? So we were rich. Sunderland was originally asked, but at the last minute things changed. So I, I if if the board members don't have a problem, I would I don't have a problem working on that. Okay. For for a while. Okay. I'm not going to argue with that one at all. <laughs> so you know the history. Unfortunately. Yeah. There you go. That's all I have. I I, I think the try I think I think if 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 Tri Town can be made into a viable alternative again for our, for our town would be a great thing. But it has to be you know swimming lessons, uh, a safe place to swim, a place for people to go to. All of those are you know. Back and back, thirty, forty years, it was a big thing to try to to find some place like that, and we we've never been able be able to do that. I mean, we've looked at Chard Pond over the year, we've looked at the Tom Park Pond, and none of those places were able to to. So, if this could make it happen, sure, we okay. can try. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Hey, Peter, got anything to say? No, thank you, Tom. Nothing tonight. Okay, hope you're feeling better. Thank you. All right, not hear anything, I will entertain a motion. I motion we adjourned. Yeah. No, you're getting pretty good at that. Hey, we all have our strengths. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, John? <laughs> I guess. Hey, you, you made F Cat laugh. That's pretty, that's pretty damn good. I, I guess I'll second under duress. <laughs> all right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Jeff declares out with a 3-0 vote at 8.06, please.